In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the derivative of this function, f of x equals x raised to the x power. Now, your first thought here might be, let's do the power rule. Look, I have an x up here. I can bring it forward, and I'm going to have x times x to the x minus 1. And you may even go further. You may try to combine these and say, okay, I'm going to multiply. I'm going to keep my base the same. I'm going to add all of these. And my final answer is x to the x. Folks, you can't do that. Okay, so let me put a big x through this. You're not allowed to do that. The reason is the power rule is reserved for when you have a real number in the exponent. Something like this, x to the negative 3. It can be a fraction, x to the 1 half, x to the 4th. In any of these cases, you could bring it out front and then subtract 1. But not so in this particular function because x is in the exponent, not a constant. This has to be a constant, a real number. Okay, well, you may initially be deterred by using the power rule, but then you take, take another look at this thing and you say, you know what, why can't I use an exponential function derivative. Why can't I do this? Why can't I just rewrite this and take u prime and then do natural log of the base? So in this scenario, you would just rewrite what you see. You would take u prime and x, the derivative of x is just one, and then you would take the natural log of the base. Again, folks, you can't do that. Look at the difference. This is not an exponential function. Reason? An exponential function has a constant as a base. And that constant can't be negative, it can't be a, a 0, and it can't be 1. It has to be 2 to the x, e to the x, a constant, a real number down here. Look at what we have here. We have x. So we can't use either of those two techniques to find the derivative of this function. So you may, may be asking if this is not an exponential function, if it's not a function amenable to using the power rule, such as a polynomial, what is it? Well, I did try to look this up on the internet, and the best I could find is that the function behaves like x factorial. I saw a few other names that higher mathematicians use, but for now, I'm just going to refer this as an x to the x type function, or I might throw the word hybrid in, but this is my name. This is something that I made up to help me remember that you cannot use either the power rule or the standard differentiation technique that, with an exponential function. So let's now talk about how to differentiate this, and we're going to review two different ways to do it. Here in method one, we're going to create an exponential function. So we talked about the fact that you can't have a variable down here as the base. So what we can do is we could change that variable x to the following, e to the ln of x. e to the ln of ln of x is the same as x. So now don't forget, this is raised to the x power, like that. So this is the same thing as saying x to the x power. Why does e to the ln of x equal x? Because recall, if these bases match, like so, these cross out and you are left with the argument. Okay, so now let's see where this takes us. Now we can use the power rule here for exponents, where if you have an exponent raised to an exponent, you can multiply these two. So this now becomes e to the x ln of x. Now, folks, we can use our rules for an exponential function. Look, we have an exponential function here. This base is now a, uh, a number 2.71. Okay, so we could go ahead and use our standard technique. What is that? We rewrite the function that we see. Then we're going to take the derivative of the exponent. 
and then we're going to take the natural log of the base. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's now, oh, I'm sorry, I left a prime here. All right, we're going to take the derivative of the exponent. So let's now do the derivative of that. And we're going to use the product rule here. So that's going to be left times the derivative of right. So x times 1 over x plus right times the derivative of the left. And when we simplify that, this is going to be 1 plus ln of x. All right, let's go ahead and rewrite everything over here to the left. We now have e to the x ln of x times 1 plus ln of x times the ln of e, which is just 1. Okay, folks, now don't forget, we changed this here originally. We have x to the x equals e to the x ln of x. So now we can go back and back substitute and change that back to its original form, and this is our final answer. Okay, let me reveal that last part again. Here, we said that this x, which is being raised to the x, we could change that x to e to the ln of x, but this original x is still here, right there. So this is the same as x to the ln of x. We're allowed to multiply these two, we get this. So this is the same as x to the x. Now, when it shows up here at the very end, here we are, here we have it, e to the x times ln of x, we can then back substitute and re change it to x to the x times one plus ln x. Folks, this is your final derivative. In our second method, we're gonna use logarithmic differentiation. So the first thing we're going to do is change f of x to y, and we're going to say that y equals x to the x. We're then going to take the natural log of both sides, so we're going to have the natural log of y equals natural log of x to the x. We're then going to use the log properties and bring that x out front, and we're going to have ln of y equals x times ln of x. Now, folks, we're going to take the derivative with respect to x on both sides. All right. On the left, we're going to use implicit differentiation. So here, we're going to take 1 over the argument times the derivative of the argument times the natural log of the base. Over here, we're going to use the product rule, which we did earlier in the video. We're going to go left times the derivative of the right plus right times the derivative of the left. When we do that, we're going to have here 1 plus ln of x. And over here, we're going to, ha over here we're going to have 1 over y. We're going to change y to do y dx. We could have left it as y prime but I'm gonna change it to dy dx, and natural log of e is just one. So folks, here's what we have right now. Let me bring that over. Okay, let me do some erasure here. Let's see, let's take all this out. Okay, now the idea is to solve for dy dx. Again, we could have left this as y prime. But we want to solve for that. To do that, we're going to multiply both sides by y. And when we do that, we have dy dx on the left, which is what we want, is y times 1 plus ln of x. And here, folks, we just go ahead and back substitute. And our final is going to be x to the x, oh, uh, excuse me, times 1 plus ln of x which is what we got in part one of the video. So all I did was take this x to the x and bring this down and replace y with x to the x.